Uh, all right, next question. Van life or airport and Airbnb? If they grow rich, that's crazy. <laughs> airport, what's that? <laughs> yeah, I, the, the question should be more like van life or cars and Airbnbs would probably be a better. There's not too many people that are flying in and out of every tournament. Um, but both right. of you guys have done the living in your car, living in your van. What uh, what kind of made you, I guess, switch from doing so into actually going into the Airbnbs? Or was it simply just a money situation? So it's a little bit of both for me, for sure. Um, I'm actually really thankful that I started with the car life. So like first year on tour, I slept in my Honda Civic and it was kind of like bare bones. You know, he did the Prius too. So he knows exactly what it's like living in the car. Next year, I actually converted over the Toyota Sienna, had more space, um, much more doable. And then uh, mainly it's the money um, that got me, you know, into the Airbnb life. It is way better. It is on like night and day difference, but it does cost more money. And if you want the exact thing that made me switch, it's called, I played the Mid-America Open in that van, and it was 100 degrees, 100% humidity for seven days straight, and it got down to like 82 at midnight, or at five in the morning. That was the low. 82 is the low, and you cannot sleep in that, okay? I would run the AC in my car for a half hour as hard as I could. it get freezing in my car, and then I'd go to sleep. <laughs> I'd wake up two hours later, and I'd have to do the same thing again. Oh. If you have never slept in 82 degrees, like, oh my gosh, it is not possible. And that's why I switched to Airbnb life. Did you ever sleep in the nude in your car? Just like, no okay, here's clothes the on? Just... Here's the thing, Brody. I yeah. never, I never locked my doors and I never had window covers. So like I, I was down to my underwear, but people can just like look in at me. <laughs> and I felt like I'd get a ticket or something like that for sleeping naked. <laughs> Uh, uh, I think the spicy question is cheese. <laughs> spicy. Uh, it's spicy. Now, I, I can relate to you, though, a little bit, but my story is a little bit different. I was actually in Bali on the amazing race, and we had to sleep outside okay. one night, and it was it was the same thing. It was like 90 degrees plus, super humid, and we're just sleeping outside, and I'm like, this is this is awful. It's so, horrible. Yeah. You, you, you can't do anything. When, whenever you start feeling like the, the sweat drips, like fall down your body. Like you can actually just feel all the sweat just slowly falling all over your, it's you're, you're not going to sleep. I've What's sleep, it? Negative like? 10 before negative 10. You can deal with man. Just put no, on a sleeping bag. Hypothermia. No, just put a sleeping bag on a oh. blanket. You go right to sleep. I mean, like you wake <laughs> up frozen to the side of your car in the morning or whatever, but like that's 10 times better than 95 at night. Oh, you just can't cool down. It's yeah. impossible. And your, your body temperature is, what, like 98 degrees? So, like, it kind of wants to create its own little ecosystem inside the car to where, like, your body kind of makes its own heat. And then, yeah, so cold is definitely not as painful. I have, like, a little, like, a little uh, PC fan that I plug into a <laughs> USB port, like a USB charger. So I could just have the fan right <laughs> in my face and just, that's kind of how I was able to sleep sometimes in the Prius. But I do yeah. appreciate you guys not, like, um, it, the Airbnb world would be a lot harder if all three of us were very different on temperatures of how oh, we like yeah. to sleep, because it would, it would be, it would be tough if we were constantly thermostat, like, nah, 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 nah. but I you guys like the temperature we had last season or it wasn't yeah. like way too hot for you guys. Or, oh. I, I think don't... we're adding Tristan to the, to the Airbnb though. So we might be in, in trouble now. I, Is he a hot I... guy? No, I shared a Airbnb oh. or I shared a hotel with <laughs> well, him one yeah, time I mean... and he just cranked the AC all the way and it was so cold it was like 55 degrees in our hotel room See, I, that's so that's just so dependent on what these airbnb like sometimes it's just like a sheet like you don't even have like right, a, right. a thick a thick uh thing so like if it's yeah. that then it's like i'm fine with like 68 69 70 but like yeah if he's cranking it down to 60 i might have to like i might have to pack a my own like comforter or something Blanket, or, a, yeah. or a sleeping bag i might have to go great sleeping bag um what made you change the decision uh Ezra, what, what made you go from Prius to Airbnbs? Oh, first of all, Tristan, Tristan and I have been showing a place for the last like month and a half, two months, and it's been like 69 the whole time. So it's like, oh, it hasn't okay. been too bad. Cool. Okay. Uh, nice. What made me decide to change? You know, the pre, I, I changed from the Prius to the RV, probably just because Dishcraft, you know, we were able to walk that out. So that was, that was nice. The cost thing wasn't really a big issue because like living in a 
OV with a generator and all that stuff and gas, portable gas mileage. The cost actually ended up being somewhat similar, I think, for the RV versus the Airbnb. So it kind of just depends on how you have your contract worked out to have, you know, for that pay. Um, but I kind of wanted to mix it up. I kind of wanted to, yeah, kind of wanted to see if it was better, I guess. So I kind of wanted to try out the living in an actual house, having a little bit more nimbleness with an actual vehicle. And um, yeah, I mean, I think I mean, the Airbnb route would be a lot nicer, but I just, I had some pretty tough um, housemates that made it difficult. So that kind of sucked. <laughs> but uh, no, I'm kidding. I think that is actually a big part of, I think, I think having good housemates though makes it, makes it way, way easier to do. Cause I have, I have heard some stories from other people, you know, that maybe it doesn't work out as good. And there was just a difference of you know, the, the way to live. Well, like you said, the temperature, you're whatever saying, it might be. Not everyone on the pro tour are friends. No, come on. Yeah. Not <laughs> everyone gets along. Not no. No, no, let's just say this. Let's just say this. It's not even necessarily like not friends. It's just like, if, if, you know, one person hates having the same full dishes and one person that that's how they want to live or, you know, just, just those, just people live different ways. And so it's like, if, if, if people don't, um, don't mesh, then it makes living together difficult. But I think it went pretty well last year with you guys. One thing that I will say, Aaron, you made a good point of where you're, you were saying like, you're thankful that you started in the car world and then you kind of transitioned. It might be kind of similar in a way to where, when you go to college, like if you just go, you know, if your parents are super wealthy and you just go straight into like your own apartment and you don't have a roommate and you don't have to deal with living in the dorms and what that, all that stuff that happens, you might like lose a little bit of appreciation for it. And you might like lose some of like the social skills and like, honestly, just survival skills that you have to have living in a dorm. Um, it could be kind of the same, now, obviously, I, I never did the van life before, <laughs> but being on an ultimate Frisbee team, I mean, there was multiple times where you're having eight guys stay in a hotel room. And, you know, if you're the bottom of the tone pole, you get like the couch pillow and maybe a towel and you have the floor. And it's just like, so yeah. it was, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, dude. <laughs> Come That's on, you, you, you know how that how it goes sometimes. Oh, All yeah. the frisbee is so stingy, dude. We would show up to like tournaments and we we're like, "Wow, they don't have peanut butter for the bagels." It's like, bro, they gave us free bagels. Like, <laughs> why why are we complaining about our condiments that we get to put on our spreads? Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I I it'll be interesting to kind of see if disc golf ever gets to the point of where people are just coming on tour and getting massive contracts for some reason. I don't know how that would happen because we don't really have like a college football program or something where you can like be a massive person in the lower division, right? You kind of have to work your right. way up. So I don't really know if that would ever be an issue for disc golf. Yeah, you'd almost have to have like that silver series, like yeah. its own tool thing or college or some kind of thing. I do want to make a quick comment though. The only thing I have to say about what you just said, Brody, is you do not have to go to college to learn how to do laundry. That's all, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> I'm <laughs> saying, going to college definitely teaches you a lot of things though. It's not, it's, you don't, it does. You get more knowledge. Well, it's not, it does, but it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily, yeah, it does teach a lot of things, but a lot of things you don't want to learn. And then also, <laughs> uh, it, right, I, right? I don't know. And then also a lot of things that you don't necessarily need to go to college too long. Granted, I've never been to college, so I can't speak completely. But from what I've seen from other people, I think a lot of it is, uh, I, I, it's just I, kind I, of fun. This is just a debate that Brody and I have had in no, the past. So it's, I just it's kind of funny. It's a up. good debate. And, and maybe I don't have the right perspective because I got scholarships. Like we weren't able to afford oh. school. We weren't able to afford it. So for me to go to school, I needed to get the scholarships. So yeah. I got, uh, to, and then, and then I ended up dropping out and losing all my scholarships and I had to pay to get my degree at the end, but it would be an interesting story uh, question of like, Hey, you have to pay $30,000 a year to go here. I don't know what my decision would have been if I didn't have those scholarships. Cause you're right. Like, I don't know. Scholarship I mean, makes it a lot. Yeah. Makes a lot, makes it make a lot more sense for yeah, sure. It's, 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 it's a much easier transition kind of going that route than just being thrown out into the world yourself. So you might have gone straight into disc golf if you hadn't gone to college. Yeah. No, no shot. <laughs> uh, would not recommend. Okay. Would not recommend. <laughs> My degree was in business for the person that Doc wanted to know in the chat.